Alright everybody, hello and welcome as always. I am Sean, and this is In The Mixer, and it is the last episode of Season 13. Potentially one of the last episodes of the series itself, as we play the last two games of the season. As things currently stand, we're trying to beat the drop. We are three points clear of Wolves in 18th spot. We're currently sitting in 17th. We have a horrific goal difference, and our final two games of the season are away to third place Liverpool who are already guaranteed a Champions League qualification, but could finish as high as second position if other games go their way. We have beaten them already once before this season away at Anfield back in December. And the other game, we're playing West Ham, who are pretty much already guaranteed relegation, I think. No, with 28 points, even they could potentially get out if other results, including beating us, go their way. So still a tremendous amount to play for for a couple of the teams down here. And we have been absolutely garbage at certain points and then gone on a good run lately, which has seen us move back up the table. So in that last episode, of course, we played Leicester and Manchester City got absolutely pummeled in both games. And then we went on a further eight games before we actually got a victory again. I think there were 14 games in total during this stretch where we didn't actually win a match. Frustrating 2-0 defeat to Burnley. A 4-0 destruction by Manchester City. But keep in mind, we played a rotated side to try and get out of the FA Cup a little bit. Two red cards in that game, which also killed us. Lost 4-2 to Arsenal, really couldn't find what we were doing wrong. A step in the right direction to Blackburn, and even though we lost 6-2 here and the result looks horrible, a step in the right direction against Tottenham as well, who are very, very good and have now won the league. Back to the drawing board after a 4-1 against Southampton, and then a 3-0 against Swansea, who are also one of the teams struggling in this division. So effectively, the change that I made was instead of tweaking too much and changing a whole bunch, we just stayed on cautious, and all I did was put everyone in their favoured mentalities so if we just do quick pick as an example all i had done was pretty much play greshi as an inverted winger on attack because that's his favorite role and i went kind of through the whole team and played pretty much our first choice 11 playing in their preferred roles and positions and with that we haven't won every game but we've at least been competitive in each fixture but even then, it has been gradual. It has been quite frustrating at times. A 1-1 draw with Watford. We were on track to get our first win in forever. And Pete Dewhurst, who's currently the England starting striker, got a 90-plus five-minute goal. There was only supposed to be like four minutes of extra time. Robbie Sullivan got injured late, came off. And with that additional time added on, they managed to find the equaliser on the counter-attack. Super frustrating. We then had a 1-0 win, our first victory in forever against Newcastle United away from home. We then beat Norwich at Carrow Road 3-1. A 2-2 draw with Wolves, who were flying at the time. They went two goals up early, and we managed to slowly peg them back. Uh, Ewan Harrington getting the equaliser in the 82nd minute. We then beat, lost to a pretty irresistible Chelsea side, to be honest. They were very, very good in this game and had the majority of it. The goal we got was clawing one back um, against the run of play, really. Dominic Rojak uh, with a 7.0 rating. A bunch of our defenders as well with high match ratings. Kind of goes to show exactly how on top they were and how much we had to defend. We then had a late winner from George Sosa, uh, 90 plus three minutes. He actually poked it home from a clinical counter attack after an own goal had drawn us level. We then beat Everton in a really good performance away from home. Everton, I think at the time, was sitting like fifth or sixth, flying in the division. We played our counter attacking style. It worked really well. Sosa and Maguire with the goals. Maguire with a free kick on the hour mark. And then a massive, massive win, a 4 0 victory against. Crystal Palace in the Selhurst Park derby. So we're actually ground sharing with them this season, for those of you that don't remember. Sosa with a free kick, uh, sorry, with a hat trick, uh, all in the first half. Thomas Greshi also scored in that first half to see us 4 0 up at half time. Sosa got himself sent off in the 78th minute for two yellow cards. And then Velkovic, who is the big Serbian that we kind of looked at on loan from Manchester United, uh, he got himself sent off late in the game as well. So we took bragging rights in that one. But they had beaten us 4-1 earlier in the season themselves. So I don't know where that kind of leaves us in terms of the ground sharing opportunity. If you were curious and wondering, the ground is still a little while away. It's not going to be until the end of next season. So we might actually not even see it in this series, depending on how next season goes, depending how this episode goes. But it is on the way. I haven't seen anything as to what it's going to be named. I think it's just being referred to as hashtag United Stadium. It's not been named after me. So still in a scenario where I haven't had a stadium named after me in this game at all. From a playing perspective, we picked up one extra midfielder in the transfer window in January. Uh, Jorn Kollenberg, full Norwegian international. He's only 19 years old. Good midfield player. Can play as both our deep line playmaker on defend and a box-to-box -box player when we need him to. Uh, left footed player. He's got still a lot of potential to fulfill, but he's been excellent in terms of that extra midfield body that we had to get. 
The other one I'm going to call it out, Aiden Graydon. I accidentally sent him out on loan. He came back from his injury. There was a loan offer put in for him. He was upset at the time. Both he and Anthony Gilligan, who's still in our under-23s, are the main two players that have had unhappiness throughout the course of the year. It was spreading throughout the team, so I thought it was probably best to let him go once the loan offer came in. I regret it immediately because it left us short of one fullback, and Joel Holden, thankfully, has managed to stay fit most of the year. And he's done all right. Still not the best. Uh, we want to get Graydon back in. We want to get him playing on that right wing again. We want to get him settled in the wing back spot. But for the most part, we've kept pretty much the same 11 together. Sosa, of course, is going to miss out today, so O'Connor will come in. And Robbie Sullivan has actually been out for a little while as well. And Kevin Simpson's played the last couple of months with, I think it was an abdominal injury or a thigh strain. or so. It was something along those lines. Still a very young side, still a very good side. We're trying to keep our momentum going. And we do have a good opportunity at home in our cautious mentality to still go after Liverpool and still get three points. We know we can do it at Anfield, and we did ride our luck in that game, but hopefully the football gods are smiling on us, and in a decent run of form, three wins on the trot, I'm hoping we're in a good space to actually get something out of this match. And the other thing, the part that I haven't really thought about, is that you guys haven't seen us actually win any games at all in Season 13. The first episode, we lost both our games. The last episode, we lost both our games. These are the last two games of the season, and really the last opportunity for you guys to see how the team's doing and how the team's playing and how wrong it can go and how well it can go at certain times as well. They've still got Gomez. Kieran Tierney has signed for them. He's their captain. Uh, Valverde from Real Madrid. Anchors midfield. Ben Woodburn still playing at the 10. Don Bellet's on the left wing and a whole bunch of high quality regen players as well. Regens, new gens. I don't really care. I just call them regens. It's what I grew up calling them, so it's what I'm going to continue. Marco Richter is one of the nominees for the golden boy award i think it is uh like just phenomenal stat lines here look at all this green it's absolutely insane and they've got a few other quality players there so we're gonna have to be at our best to beat them we're gonna have to go in with a counter-attacking mentality which is why we're going with cautious and i'm just going to assertively tell everyone we can effectively avoid relegation with the win here so go out there and impress me and no one's responded particularly positively so we're just going to assertively tell everybody else that we have faith in them and that they can make a difference just to give everyone a bit of a kick up the backside We've been in a better run of form. We've managed to turn it around late in the season. And really, just I think one point will be enough for us to guarantee our survival in this episode. All right, and away we go. The finale of season 13. And I'm, I know I mentioned it a little bit in the last episode. We know that the beta version is coming. This episode's coming out on the Monday. I'm pretty sure that by the Friday at the very latest, which will be the 18th, I think it is, that we should have a beta version of the game out and ready to play. And as soon as that happens, I want to transition into our Atletico Madrid save because that's the one that you guys all voted for. And I know you'll all be desperate to see as much of that content as humanly possible, but I want to give this series a good finish and maybe one last crack at the Premier League would be perfect. If we do go down in this episode, touch whatever wood happens to be around you, we might have a think about how much we want to continue it. We've got a corner here, Maguire to take. He goes short to Sullivan, cut back to Kohlenberg at the top of the box, gets it on his left foot and instead goes back to Greshi. Kohlenberg to Colbass. Strike from distance. What a goal that is from Jan Kolbass. Only his third of the season, but he's come up with some massive goals for us throughout the year. I think he got a double against Manchester United when we beat them or drew with them or something. It's good play. gresh has been excellent as well, actually, since January. Kohlenberg just plays it to Kolbass. He takes it on his right foot, which isn't his favoured one, and he curls it around the defender from about 20 yards out, and we go a goal to the good. That's not something we were capable of doing in January or February. So it's pretty amazing that, oh, here we go, they've got a free kick. Dembele to take. Rojak spills, and Zivanovic does very well to hook that one away into touch. Highlight here, it's a deep throw in for us. Kohlenberg back to Holden. Plays it forward towards Molgaard, who brings it down for Sullivan quite well. Inside to Colbass. Out to Sullivan again. Ball forward to Molgaard. He's got the man on the reverse if you can find him. Said he spreads it out wide to Zivanovic, who gets a good ball in towards Molgaard. It's hit the post and then falls to the feet of Wassel in the Liverpool goal. So we have got a bit about us. We've had a couple of highlights here and we're working the ball around well. We have that made that return to that 4-4-2 with the deep lying forward and the box-to-box midfielder instead of everyone just playing their preferred roles. And I'm hoping that changes enough to throw off the Liverpool scouting team, who will have been watching us for the last month as our form has gotten a little bit better. One minute to be added on. We've got another highlight here. It's going to come to Holden. It flicks the ball up the line via Sullivan to Mulgaard. Crossfield switch towards Greshi. He's going to look to get back on his right foot. Said he crosses, but Zvanovic tidies up. 
Kolenberg switches out the other side to Sullivan. Takes a couple of touches and strikes from the top of the box. Seventh goal of the season for Robbie Sullivan. And an absolute screamer. Let's check this one out in three dimensions. Very similar, actually, to the goal earlier in the game with the man cutting inside and then hitting it on his less than favoured foot. Kolenberg does well just to rotate out to the other side. Sullivan takes the touch around and then just hits it around the side. All right, inadvertently skipped past it, but halftime just told everyone to keep going and not to get complacent. Stat line, eight shots, five on target, 54% of the ball. Five shots, four on target, 46% of the ball for Liverpool. That's the difference in quality that you see. Like, they get all of their shots on target regardless of what's happening or those top six sides. We're cautious. We're 2-0 up. We have a lead to defend. We're going to give it 15 more minutes, and then we'll have a look at subs based on form, fitness cards, whatever else. Highlight here. It's going to start from a Wasil goal kick. It's a long one forward. Kolar wins the header well, but only as far as Woodburn. Mullis out to Dembele. Back to Mullis again. Played out left to Kieran Tierney. Gets a deep ball across. It deflects to Woodburn, who strikes from the top of the box, and thankfully just past the near post. That's the end that everything seems to be happening at in this game. All right, now go on. Greshi's the one that's struggling, so we're going to bring on Joe Carter on that left wing. He is a left-sided player, so he might give us a little bit more balance on the counter. And at 30 minutes remaining, we're going to use our Get Creative shout. Richter with the deep corner away. Uh, someone's looking at VAR. I don't know what must have happened because the ball went way over the back. Why is everyone just frozen in time? Is he going to give a penalty? Yes, he's given a penalty. I have no idea what that was for. Woodburn was impeded by Carter. So Carter, the subs, has stepped on the field and given away a penalty. What can Roshak do in goal? Woodburn's going to take it as well. Straight at him, and Roshak pushes that one away. Dembele with the cross, headed away by Carter this time. Roshak, you absolute fucking hero. That might be worth... $60 million. So there was this weird like table that came up. It wasn't weird. It made a whole bunch of sense. But we've actually made about $80 million profit this season compared to all the other teams in the division. Now, $30 million of that was committed to the new stadium. I've spent about 22 on the mar- transfer market throughout the course of the year. But we should actually make a sizable profit this season with a squad that largely we can take into next year that's going to continue to improve and get better. So we won't have to go and pay a whole bunch of transfer fees in the offseason just trying to bring in quality to round out the squad and give ourselves a bit more depth. Long ball forward here towards Mulgaard. It's going to come back to Kolenborg. Out to Sullivan on the right. Burst forward, crosses it to O'Connell. Can he find the finish? Asa O'Connell on that yellow card. I left him out there. I trusted him. And he's repaid me with his seventh goal of the season. I think each of our strikers, Sosa, Mulgaard, and O'Connell, are each sitting around like between seven and ten goals. So we haven't had the best production out of them, but I've rotated them quite a bit. And it's a great strike from O'Connell. Gets it across on his left foot. And an excellent, excellent counter-attack. Now that we have that extra goal we might actually look at a further sub they've immediately got a high up we might let that play out first all right sullivan has the ball here he's switching it out but dembele has recovered woodburn's got a man off the shoulder if he can find him it's richter who we spoke about before the game bursting into the box skipping past one challenge and thankfully rojak does very well and mcguire hooks the ball away richter now to take the corner as well it's away by Kolenberg, away by colbass but only as far as dembele at the top of the box inside to valverde Carter wins the ball back. Do we have a counter-attack on us here? He looks for a ball over the top towards Mulgaard, but the referee, or the referee, had nothing to do with it. The highlight just ended. Ball out wide now to Gomez. We just need to hold on here. Don't need to do anything crazy. Ball to Matter inside. Sullivan. Colbass recovers and puts a ball over the top for Mulgaard to chase. Malikovic tidies up well. We'll seal to Valverde. He hooks it away. We've recovered in midfield through Colbass. O'Connell just needs to slow down, keep possession. Played forward to Colbass. 2v1 on the right-hand side, gets to Sullivan. Ball comes back out to him again. It was a good save from Wasilian goal. It was a vicious-looking strike in the replay. Corner now to be taken by Maguire. I've got to change Maguire on corners. Sullivan, and he gets tackled by Kieran Tierney. Out for a throw-in. Oh, it's very tense. Now, I haven't looked at him yet, but around the ground, Swansea are losing. Crystal Palace are winning against Everton somehow. Wolves are down 2-0 to Manchester United, which is great for us. Blackburn are winning somehow. West Ham are down 3-0 to Stoke. So it would still see us stay in 17th position, but we should be clear on points if everything stays as is and no one elsewhere finds a winner or finds a victory. It might be enough to keep us in the division. It would be a massive performance if it does. Into the last 30 seconds of extra time now, they've got a corner. Richter takes it to Dembele at the top of the box who strike from distances straight at Rojak. Rojak, just hold the ball. Just hold the ball for a minute. Test out that six-second rule. Goes long now. Carter has time and space in front of him. Just go to the corner flag, please, Joe. He does. And thankfully, the referee calls full time. So we've guaranteed our safety for another year in the Premier League, which really, for a variety of different 
times throughout this season didn't look likely. I almost completely forgot about Woodburn missing that penalty. They had 18 shots, 12 on target, 46% of the ball. We had 15-9 and 54% possession, but more than anything, a 3-0 win and one of our best performances of the year. Passionately, really special lads. Nobody gave us a chance. You all played magnificently. And they've all responded positively to that. It was Sullivan and Kolenborg running the show from the base of midfield, getting the assists there. So that does guarantee our safety, despite Blackburn winning against Newcastle. West Ham and Wolves also losing has made sure that we're going to be playing Premier League football, which is massive. Like, that's probably the biggest challenge, I think, and the most intense challenge we've had so far in this series. We've got one game left. I do still want to try and win it against West Ham because we could finish as high as 14th, and the difference in prize money between 14th and 17th is pretty big. So still plenty of us to play for, even though we have avoided relegation. Let's first go and wish Robbie Sullivan well with his goal and assist in that game, really doing a tremendous amount to keep us in the league. And let's attend this press conference and say, blah, 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 blah. I don't really care. I should have sent devs. Now, magic editing, what we're going to do is jump ahead to the game against West Ham, and we'll play through that one, and then we'll go through some stuff after that as well. But magic editing, you guys won't have to watch that. All right, and just like that, we're a week ahead. They've still got a couple of players, the West Ham side. Uh, Tuazi, who looks like an X-Man City junior. Valinden, an ex-Stoke winger. And Sarachi, who I think is from Red Bull Salzburg or Red Bull Leipzig in the game. And then a whole bunch of other very highly talented youngsters round out the squad. If they are getting relegated, we're going to try and poach some of their most talented young players because... That West Ham Academy is still producing at a really good rate. Only two changes for us. Um, Arsa O'Connell has actually gone out on England under-19 duty, which is good because George Sosa can come straight back in. Uh, Kolenberg has a knock. I'm going to play him, but uh, Harrington is there if he's not 100% and not able to get through the match. So only that one change to the starting lineup. You don't really ever want to mess with a winning team. But we have secured our Premier League status, but I would like to win this match and finish the season in as strong a note as possible. Just set down a bit of a marker for next season and also to get any extra prize money that might be on offer. You can see there, Leicester's on 40 points. If we win, we will go above them. It's a deep ball across, and they've given a foul. Is this going to be another VAR penalty? This kind of sums up this entire season, actually, just watching the referee run to and from the VAR station. I don't know how frustrating it is for football fans in the real world. It is so frustrating on a simulated game. Just give a penalty. If it's a penalty, it's a penalty. The video game knows it's a penalty. This is all just for nothing. Penalty's given. If you knew that video game at the start, just go straight to the penalty. You don't need to do this. It just breaks up the play. Or at least make it FM20 ideas. Make it a tick option box. that like VAR, yes, no. And if you click no, VAR still exists in the world. But when you go to the highlight, it just shows you the penalty that's been given via VAR or it just says goal chalked off due to VAR. You don't need to do that animation every single time. It is so annoying in a full season. And I've not even been in the Premier League that long. So pray for whatever content creators you're watching that have been in the Premier League for season after season after season after season. I forgot to mention as well, we're playing with that positive mentality because I thought, let's just mix it up for the last game of the season. And we've immediately gone a goal down, even via a penalty. So maybe we should switch it back. And you know what? Given how our first 30 minutes has gone with only one shot and none on target, we're going to immediately switch it and use our demand more shout. They've immediately got a highlight here. Indio, the regen in midfield, burst forward. He's tackled by Colbass, falls to Figaro, to Ramirez. It's pinballing around there a little bit. Sarashi with the overlapping run, headed away by Maguire, but only to Figaro. Pinballing around again. Are we going to recover position? Or, or Daz eventually has a strike from distance, and Rojak pushes that one over. They've got a corner here. I'm not sure if it's the same corner. Linden with a near post ball, and Figaro is going to be offside there, so that one's going to get chalked out. Don't consult with VAR, you know it's offside, because that's how we set up. We don't have anyone on the posts, so that everyone is offside from the corner, or from any flick-ons. Oh, great ball. I forgot to commentate any of it. It's a great deep ball from Holden there, and Greshi arrived late at the back post. Seems to just miss everyone. I'm not sure if a defender missed the header. We'll see it in 3D here. Sosa comes forward, plays Holden, who goes for the deep cross. And could a defender have maybe gotten it away? Maybe Walton what? So could have, but Greshi read it very well, continued his run regardless, and smashed that one home at far post to get us that equalising goal just before half time. And I'm thinking Kolenberg might need to come off at half. He's down to 67% condition, which when we've got a fit player on the bench, we might as well look to change him. I'm going to assertively tell everybody that I'm not happy with the performance because it's not been good. We've not been great. Everyone's responded positively. And let's bring on Ewan Harrington. 
it's probably Yuan or Ivan. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but we're going with that. Ewan, Ewan Harrington. All right, now I've gone. We've already used one sub, so I'm just going to take off Robbie Sullivan because he's on a yellow card and not playing particularly well. And we'll bring on Kevin Simpson to see out the rest of the match. But I'm just going to keep that last sub up my sleeve for the last 10 minutes because Cole Bass is on a yellow card as well. We don't have another midfielder on the bench, but we do have a little bit of wiggle room with positions and players if he does happen to get sent off. Deep ball in towards Tuazi, and that's a good finish from fuck all angle to deal with. Ninth goal of the season from him. Let's switch it up. Let's go to our positive mentality for the last 30 minutes. Let's also use our Get Creative Shout. Old Faithful after an hour. Usually does the trick. It's a good little way to pass by Walton into the area, and he didn't have much to aim at, and he just smashed it past the goalkeeper on the near side. So you'd say that's one that Rojak probably wants to get back. Thompson with a deep ball forward from the free kick. Ramirez skips past one and then goes for a crossfield switch. Valinden will keep it in. Cross deflected. Cole Bass recovers now. We do have a bit of a counter attack on. He looks for Greshi out wide. Instead, it's going to get tidied up by Gardner, who goes all the way back to Fernandez in goal. Long ball forward towards Ramirez, who skips past one challenge without any issue. Falls to Indio at the top of the box, and his strike from the edge of the area is just wide. Throw in here with Sirachi. It's well won back by Simpson. Can he get a decent ball in? Finds Sosa at the top of the box, who takes a few touches, gets his strike away, and just over the crossbar. Ten minutes remaining. We're going to make our last sub. We'll bring on Yanni Vlachos, because it will likely be his last appearance for the club. He's just kind of hit his ceiling a little bit in the Premier League. I think his contract's up as well, so we'll demand more from everybody. See if we can get some sort of response out of everyone in the last 10 minutes. If we can find an equaliser, that'd be great. But really, nothing would summarise our season better than beating Liverpool 3-0 at home and then losing randomly 2-1 to West Ham. Because we've figured out how to do really well against teams that are better than us and teams that try and break us down with possession. But teams that are shit like we are, we really struggle against at the moment. And some of that might be down to personnel. Like, in reality, I think we're like a championship quality side that's overperforming to be in the Premier League. So in reality, we might need to have a look at as many high-quality players in as we can. Valinden take corner here, but it's pretty much the end of full time. I'm just waiting for the referee's whistle, and he does. So it's a 2-1 defeat on the last day of the season. But if you had said to me at the start of the game, start of the episode, you're going to get 1-3-0 win and 1-2-1 defeat. One, I'd have thought it was the other way around, and Liverpool were going to beat us, but I'd have taken it if it meant we stayed in the division. Assertively, not happy with your performance out there. Don't need to complicate it any further than that. Everyone seems motivated, which is great. Right, and that's how the curtain comes down on the season. We finish in 17th spot, six points clear of relegation in the end. You can see the three teams that are going down all finished on 31 points. We didn't quite hit that 40-point milestone that everyone talks about as being safe. We figured it was with negative 27 goal difference, so 21 defeats, 7 draws, 10 wins, which isn't a terrible effort. There's some massive, massive wins in there, uh, beating Liverpool twice, getting the double against them. I think it's the only team we actually beat twice. Winning 4-0 against Crystal Palace was massive. Winning 4-0 against Wolves, 4-0 against Blackburn. At the time, they felt like massive results, albeit with those two teams both getting relegated. We beat Newcastle away at St. James's Park. We beat Everton away at Goodison Road. Goodison Park? Goodison Park. The league in the end was won by Tottenham, equal on points with Chelsea, won it on goal difference. When you take into consideration, they beat us 7-1 and 6-2 throughout the season, whereas Chelsea, we actually gave a bit more of a struggle to and put up a bit more of a fight with we did have an influence on the Premier League title. Think of it that way, all right? Think of it, we didn't win the Premier League title, but we did influence who eventually won it by folding over any time Tottenham came anywhere near us. And see there, Tottenham win the Premier League with 86 points. Hashtag United defeated in the last game of the season, but that's absolutely fine. I'm not going to worry about the post-match press conference. We're going to send Devs. He can actually go and do it. And we get £9.45 million for finishing in 17th place in the English Premier League. And a squad bonus of 300 k to be paid out to everybody for keeping us in the division Finance is looking pretty good. We've got £93 million as an overall balance. 82 of that is actually profit that's in the bank right now. And we are a long, long way from the days of being miles and miles and miles in debt. And we have a new stadium on the way. And we have a transfer window. And we have a good group of young, high potential players that are on contract for at least another season. And that's actually what we might do now, just to show you guys how we'll do it. We're going to put all our high potential guys here. We've got guys here that potentially we might look to move on. Uh, I'll go and have a look further at what's available first before we cut ties with anyone. But, you know, Joel Holden, do we need to keep hold of him? He did fine this week, this year, I mean, but uh, in reality, he's probably at his ceiling despite only being 18. You know, these guys here are wanted by other clubs. Does that mean that people want to come in and actually pay transfer wages to give them first-team football? Is that what's better for them? And then the other side of it as well is what players can we actually bring in like you can see here, we know we've got Arkanovic just joining us in the summer. He's going to be excellent. We'll come straight into the starting lineup pretty much. Nen's another year away. Matt Downing's going to join us from Tottenham. 
just a talented youth player that's coming off contract, which means we'll probably let Kevin Simpson go. But really, we've also got to go and have a look at who is available and most importantly, who's actually interested in coming and joining. You can see here Ronnie Bannister, currently transfer listed by request. Looks like he might be a decent striker. We'll actually start having a look at more of these players that we can pick up on transfers. They only picked him up from Burnley last year and he's already upset. So maybe he's someone that we'll look to bring in. A couple of other good looking players here, one playing in China at the moment, a Paraguayan international. So we will, we'll sit down, we'll go through everyone that's available, everyone that we actually realistically could get and wants to come and play with us and decide how we're going to try and strengthen that squad to keep that main group of high potential players in and around. So we've already got like a good core that we're going to keep together. At the very least 13, probably 14 by the time you work in Ronnie Sullivan, Robbie Sullivan, sorry, and Sean Duncan as a backup goalkeeper. We only really need to get like maybe five or six additional players to come in because we know we have future transfers arranged. Again, we'll do that all off-season. We'll come back at the start of Season 14 in the next episode, and we're going to try for one more season. I think it's going to be this Friday that the beta save gets released. If it doesn't, we might, fingers crossed, have another season that we can throw that way. But effectively, as soon as that beta drops, I want Hashtag United as a series to be finished, to give it a conclusion at the end of the season, and to be able to bring you guys the Atletico Madrid content as our beta save, which you guys voted for, and then hopefully down the track, our Isle of Man series as well. As always though guys, thank you for watching, that's the part that means the most to me. Throw a like on the video if you've enjoyed the series so far, subscribe to the channel if you want to be kept up to date on other videos as they're released, or alternatively you can follow in the mixer underscore FM on Twitter. There's a whole bunch of different content that comes through there, just even conversations with other content creators and fans and whatever else, like that's the best platform to see all that sort of stuff, so by all means jump on there and give me a follow. But as always, I've been Sean, this is in the mixer, and don't you ever forget to hashtag it.